So I saw Only the Brave a few weeks ago, and first thing I just got to say is I absolutely loved it. It easily makes it into my top 10 list of the year, and I'd highly recommend seeing it. It was honest, it was heartfelt and emotional, and most of all, it even had a personality and had something to say. The characters were all portrayed respectfully, as of course this was based on a true story about real life people. It was masterfully written with emotional impact, and most importantly, Only the Brave truly lets its audiences into this lifestyle for the duration of its runtime. You feel the stress and the danger, yet you also feel the camaraderie, the friendship, and understand the reasoning behind why people with these sorts of careers continue to do what they do, the accomplishment that comes with it, and the vitality of a helping hand. Only the Brave allows a unique perspective to be pushed upon those who don't live such lives and do not know the ups and downs for those that are living them. And for that, I really appreciated it on a human level. It was all very real. But I think there's another way to look at Only the Brave and the impossibly heroic men it's based on. And that is that there are quite a few parallels between the hotshots portrayed in the film and comic book style superheroes. One scene in particular reminded me heavily of a certain superhero who we're all familiar with. This being the scene in which Miles Teller's Brendan McDonough is pushing his daughter on a swing but shortly gets interrupted by a raging fire. And of course from here McDonough must spring into action leaving his family behind in order to assist with the imposing fire. It was here where I was instantly reminded of the caped crusader himself, Batman. And from here on throughout the film I sort of viewed it all a little differently with Batman constantly being linked to certain things in the back of my mind. In this way of thinking, when Brendan McDonough is with his family and being present as a father, it's kind of like his being his own version of Bruce Wayne. In this scene again though, where he is pushing his daughter, his Bruce Wayne is taken out of the picture because of the danger ahead. Here, the fire acts as his bat signal, ultimately transforming him into the superhero that he is. And so he must respond immediately. When McDonough is fighting fires and working with the hotshots, he is his own version of Batman. And so as it is for the others as well. For me, the movie was all about heroism, claiming quite a heavy link to the genre I love in which superheroes are center stage. Each of the granite mountain hotshots starring in the film helm a responsibility to help those in need. This isn't just a job for these men, but a way of life. Josh Boland's superintendent Eric Marsh possesses a need to help others so strongly that throughout the film it's even described as a full-fledged addiction. He cannot stop. This is his path just as surely as Superman's path is to fight for justice and Captain America's is to oppose evil and defend the innocent. The film does a fantastic job of making this understandable to the everyday person though by making it clear that when he doesn't act, bad things can happen. So if that's the case, how could he stop? How could he ever possibly be okay with not using his ability, super or not, to help those in need? Like the classic Spider-Man saying goes, with great power comes great responsibility. Keeping another common theme among the superhero genre, only the brave could again be linked back to Spider-Man in another way. This is where there's difficulty in maintaining balance between personal and professional life. Being a hero, super or not, requires sacrifice. Throughout the film, we see firsthand that many of the characters struggle to balance their time between the work and their family lives. And it becomes sadly ironic when you realize that these men risk their lives every day, but in their eyes, they somehow still never do enough in one way or another. If they do their jobs well and are busy fighting these fires and saving lives, they end up letting somebody down back at home. But if they give it all up to have more time at home, they'd be giving up their heroic side and lose that battle. If that were the case, they'd not be serving the duty that they feel that they should. And that kind of stress can really weigh somebody down. This all heavily reminds me of Spider-Man as a recurring theme throughout the comic books and movies is this exact same struggle between Peter Parker's personal life and his alter ego. This all proving that fictional or not, time is a hero's worst enemy. And then of course lastly is the most obvious link between the hotshots and superheroes of them all. That being the selflessness factor. These brave men head into battle even when they know that there's quite a chance that they won't return alive. They put others safety above all else and don't even look back because in their minds it's very clearly what must be done. And if that is not super heroic, I don't know what is. With the utmost respect for the Granite Mountain hotshots and all those who do or have done anything similar in terms of work, I think that they represent all things that comic book superheroes try to represent. So if you ask me, I'd say that all of those that served in this team were and are all real life superheroes heroes in their own realistic and human way. Though they may not have sharp claws and metal skeletons, they have strength. Though they may not have laser vision and the ability to fly, they have courage. And though they may not be quite as powerful, quite as over the top, or have the ability to save the entire world, well, they're real. <laughs>